I mean, obviously there are there is much more conformism within the artistic field right now, and a lot of artists are completely conscious about that, and there are constant sense of uh, unhappiness, complaint, and uh, some kind of even defiance to the sense of censorship, self-censorship, I would say, um, that is that has been imposed on them. When I was taken to court of the piece that I did in 1993 uh, for the third Istanbul Biennial, uh, I was taken to court for insulting the Turkish flag first. And then that court case dropped because there was no real Turkish flag. Then uh, immediately following, uh, I was again charged by uh, this time uh, insulting the emblems of Turkish nation. So it was a kind of, as just I did with my uh, uh, reactionary work in the Fourth Istanbul Biennial, uh, we defended at the court, I mean my lawyer defended me, twisting it around. and. I was lucky because, you know, I was naive enough to give uh, 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 interviews to uh, newspapers before, uh, openly talking about what the work is about, because the uh, Kurdish uh, problem was at its kind of really utter most highest uh, problematic uh, phase. Uh, there were like a lot of uh, villages being um, emptied and burned out. So many Kurdish uh, missing, or some political, not only Kurdish, but politically active people. Uh, so it was like a nightmare, a political nightmare times uh, in 1992, 1993, these years. We knew what it was about in a way, but I mean, perhaps I was lucky because the court case, uh, the, the the judge could have uh, done some um, uh, research and you know pushed me more into uh, a deeper case. He preferred not to, luck or this and that I don't know. <laughs> but the second, my reactionary piece, following that in 1994. Uh, in 1995, I guess, the 4th Istanbul Biennial, it was about the same issues. But if, and talking in, even in a more uh, harsh way, if you understand it, but there is no emblem uh, that uh, can immediately link the work to the uh, so-called emblems of a society. So, you know, it depends on how you move around. But of course, there is oppression and censorship. Mostly visual arts has been seen as a kind of uh, a secondary uh, discipline to control. And um, one reason of that is also perhaps um, the fact that visual arts, painting, sculpture, from the most part in the 60s and 70s were tied to a more obstructionist uh, language in which figuration and narrative did not approach much politicality. Uh, but contemporary art, in the, which has progressed in the last uh, two decades, um, were, was, has been quite transgressive in terms of political engagement and um, they touch the issues of nationalism, religious conservatism and patriarchy in a quite uh, mm. harsh ways. Um, um, so I mean this is a kind of a, a very promising uh, phase that we are going through now but it is in a way also so fast, fast forward. <laughs> 
Uh, I had a piece recently. Uh, I I was participating in a show called Hasetusu uh, Metrezalet Envy Enmity uh, at Artar, uh, a group exhibition, and I made a project called uh, I Know People Like This Three, uh, which consisted of these uh, or more than 700 uh, X-rays, uh, which. Uh, were the prints of uh, um, from 50s onward until today, uh, recent, uh, like uh, in uh, late, the latest ones were from November uh, of this year, uh, from the the Arbacher, especially uh, uh, oppression. Uh, state oppression uh, events uh, taking place uh, in the Arbacher area. So anyway, I mean, uh, so it was like um, um, uh, from 50s until now, a snapshot of uh, Turkish state uh, uh, violence created, state cre created violence. And I was not sure if something would happen by uh, exhibiting such a work. I was not sure. I, I was in a way afraid, especially for uh, uh, showing uh, at the Bayol uh, window, uh, like sh shop window, you know, uh, these uh, latest uh, for photographs from journalists from the Arbacher, uh, because it was all young Kurdish uh, and all these um, uh, military or uh, police uh, uh, crashes in, in between them. I was not sure how it would be respond. It would take response. Nothing happened. A uh, lot of people cried. M many many visitors cried, which was my aim in a way. I cried a lot collecting those. I collected like 3,000 or 3,000 uh, images from archives. Uh, so it's the process of uh, uh, coming face to face. So we, Turkey needs that uh, on so many levels. Uh, not only on the Kur Kurdish issue but on all levels. Uh, so, you, you know, as you say, no guidelines, you don't know them. <laughs> That's even more hard, hard, it's harder. If you would know guidelines, uh, your life, your everyday life would be more oppressive, for sure. Uh, because that means more, uh, a kind of more dictatorship kind of uh, existence. Uh, we don't have that. <laughs> so, but it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Mm. So you you don't know exactly. Um, I mean, if you look in a larger historical scope, there was a kind of another regime of control in the past. As I said, I mean, there was really few kind of examples of um, diverting out of the official view of the state in relation with things like nationalism or um, the let's say some problematic heritage coming from the Ottoman period like Armenian genocide or um, the population swept with Greeks or um, or the unitarian structure of the country of the Republic one language one culture one ethnicity there was this kind of illusion and whoever kind of conflicted with this kind of official view, of, of course there was a kind of uh, heavy um, practice of um, suppression and censorship. I mean, um, now we kind of get free of that kind of um, official view but at the same time, in parallel to that, there is what we are experiencing is a new type of censorship and control. 
and it is not done by let's say security forces or this kind of um, some kind of blatant uh, judgments of uh, the jurisdictional systems but more delicate ways of um, let's say influencing influencing the institutions of culture and arts um, to to make them more conformist or to have this kind of indirect accusations I mean they for example they say yes it's true that there are a lot of journalists in prison but they are not in prison because of their views but they have been contributing to terrorist activities for example which have they say this has been proven of course I mean loads of them are completely fictitious but the reasoning is that I mean they um, didn't breach let's say um, the freedom of expression there's a course uh, they say they just find people who kind of collaborated with um, military coup plans plots and um, some more dubious kind of terroristic organizations uh, they say so there is this kind of subtle um, strategies that seem to be uh, not direct censorship but or kind of um, prosecution but subtle ways of discrimination and othering I mean of course I mean if you're taken to court uh, you don't really know it it lasted about a year I didn't know if it would work out that if the way we moved around the court uh, case would turn into positive or not for example I couldn't have at that uh, time and still uh, go into the court and say yes these are the star this the star and the crescent here stands for uh, resembling this region the society living in this region I don't care if it's Turkish or Greek or that I don't like that's just the terminology for me uh, and openly speak about the Kurdish issue and what the hell is going on there was no way For, first the constitution is still like that even now uh, you cannot play around with the emblems of the Turkish nation uh, so I don't show that work I talk about it but I don't show it it was um, uh, asked to be shown in a in two large exhibitions a couple of years ago in 2007 uh, one at Istanbul Modern uh, kind of collection of some uh, uh, pieces from the all the previous Istanbul biennials and that piece was also asked by the curators to be involved in and I asked the lawyers uh, and they said uh, there is no um, uh, guarantee that you won't be taken back again to court because uh, the crime uh, happens with exhibiting the work so I said okay I, I cannot stand going back to court case again going through the same stuff so I preferred not to show it. It was also invited for another exhibition at Central Istanbul uh, Modernism and Beyond exhibition. So both I rejected both those. I participated with other works, but I didn't want to show that work, and I wouldn't. I still wouldn't. We have we started to see examples of, um, let's say accusations and uh, some kind of trials and, and so on as we have seen in the last case of the famous composer Fazil Sai who sent a tweet um, in relation with his views on religion I mean it was not his direct opinion but a kind of quotation but it was taken as a kind of uh, um, 
insult uh, to religious faith and so on. I mean, this kind of stuff was this kind of approach from legal system was mostly um, targeting the people who were critical about the Republican and uh, Kemalist uh, principles of the Republic, but now there is a new system and then uh, it was more sensitive in, uh, in things related to conservative values, religion and patriarchy and, and so on. Another interesting example uh, I have an old work from one of my oldest pieces called uh, I'd Not to Give a, The School of Not to Give a Fuck, uh, which consists of a big cauldron and a lot of swords hanging on top, and the cauldron is filled with blood. And uh, that was uh, last year or the year before, exhibited at Istanbul Modern at the again, women artists exhibition. And uh, wife of prime minister came to the opening. Nothing happened. That work is not an easy work either. There were no censorship, nothing happened. Even a newspaper uh, on the side of, let's say, like a pro-government, not pro, Pro pro government, a newspaper. Uh, someone wrote an article trying to provoke. Uh, how can such a piece be shown? Uh, you know, it's like a, uh, it's like insulting uh, Muslims, etc. Nothing happened, but it could have. So, the, the, when it comes to the feeling. It is there, you know, because you don't know. Not knowing uh, is the worst uh, feeling, I can say, but it can be worse than that if you would be openly uh, forbidden to do some things. And they became more pro-EU, less anti-Western, um, more pro-capitalistic, pro-American, and uh, more friendly with the global dynamics of neoliberalism. So they helped, this helped them to produce a more moderate image, which also brought with itself a larger vote uh, from the segments of the society which previously didn't vote for them. So this kind of switching strategy also brought this kind of subtle tactics. And uh, so far, I think for them everything worked well. So they don't throw the frog into a boiling water. I mean, they just slowly warm up what is uh, in the boil. But what, what, how is the society, what is the general condition of society? After so many years of oppression, how can you expect an open-minded constitution to be written by open-minded people? So, I'm, that's the case, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs>